This is 2005's Blood Rain. Warning, spoilers ahead. Viewer discretion is advised. We open up in a medieval town, and the townspeople seem to be going about their usual business. Vladimir, Sebastian, and Katerine hitch their horses in front of a stable, and they head to a local bar where they ask for a drink and information. The bartender tells Vladimir that he might have someone of interest for them. He pulls out a poster for a carnival that's advertising a woman that's said to be an abomination to nature. Sebastian thinks that he's full of it and another man pops up beside him to order a drink. When Sebastian realizes that the man doesn't have a reflection, he takes a stake out of his pocket and drives it right into the man's chest. When the man falls to the ground, his skin seems to dry up, and that's the end of him. The bartender then tells the three hunters about the stories he heard of the carnival and the woman held there. At the carnival, we see Amanda giving a show of how she can wield her double blades, and once she's done, they introduce Rain. The ringleader shows off some of Rain's abilities, and he eventually cuts her, so that she can drink the blood of a sheep to heal herself in front of the crowd. It's one of those instances where yeah, she's fine, but just because she can heal instantly doesn't mean that that doesn't hurt like hell whenever she has to go through it. After the show is over, they lock Rain back in her cage, and Amanda comes to visit her. Amanda tells her that she has a plan to get them out of there, and she leaves her a crucifix necklace for protection. Elsewhere, Kagan is told the news of a damp pier at the carnival, and he has flashbacks to the woman that he drank from years ago. He sends Domestir to fetch Rain, but it turns out that Rain has already set herself free. Rain runs into the nearby woods while she has flashes of her blood rage filled escape. When one of the carnies came in to have his way with her, she hit him with a glass bottle, and the blood that dripped onto her set her into a frenzy. Once Rain was loose, she tore through the carnival while drinking from every man and woman. In the morning, Vladimir and the others ride for the carnival, and he tells the others that finding the Dampier is his answer for handling Kagan and his army. When they arrive at the carnival, they find some survivors picking up the pieces of the attack from the night before, and they investigate the bodies. Katimir finds Amanda alive, but she's been bitten. It was probably the acting that made Rain bite her. She actually sounds a little better now that she's been bitten. Katimir kills Amanda, and they set fire to the rest of the bodies before heading out to Rain. Katimir goes her own way, but they aren't the only ones looking for Rain. That evening, Elrich has his squire write a letter to his daughter Katerine, and he tells her that the Hunter Society can't defeat Kagan after all. He tells her that he needs her to bring him the secret artifact at Brimstone Manor. As the squire leaves, we can see that Elrich has been bitten. Is there anyone that hasn't been bit by a vampire yet? Speaking of that, Rain finds a bunch of vampire bandits and drinks from their blood. There isn't any sort of vampire blood taboo in this universe. Either they don't go over all the rules of the film, or there just aren't any. I prefer to think it's the latter. After saving the remaining humans, Rain hitches a ride into town, and she continues feeding on vampires once there. Eventually, she runs into the fortune teller who tells her that she has a great destiny. She tells Rain that Kagan is actually her father, and she tells her where to find Kagan. She also tells her about an eye talisman that she needs to get in order to gain an audience with Kagan. When Rain leaves, she steals a horse and heads for the monastery to retrieve the talisman. She's got a tail, though. The man that spotted her reports to Domestir, who reports back to Kagan. Kagan tells him to let Rain find the eye first, but he wants him to kill her right afterwards. When Domestir rallies other vampires to go after Rain, Vladimir and Sebastian notice this and head for the monastery as well. When Rain arrives at the monastery, she tells the men a story that convinces them to let her in, and they give her food and rest. I don't know what that food is, though. Three oversized apple slices covered in gravy? People probably didn't leave the monastery without a good dose of food poisoning. While she's sleeping, Rain hears whispering, and she heads for a chamber with an oversized, deformed guard. What is this? I played the games and I honestly don't remember deformed monks with giant Harley Quinn mallets. Blood Rain was a lawless film. After she kills the monk, she takes the crucifix key and goes deeper into the chamber. When she finds the room with the eye, she finds that it's booby-trapped with circular saws that would put Jigsaw to shame. She cartwheels her way to the eye, and the room traps her inside as it fills with water. Rain tries to find a way out, but when she realizes that she doesn't have any options, she looks into the eye amulet and it fuses with her. Suddenly, her knife slips from the ceiling, and she lands in the water to find that it doesn't hurt her anymore. A monk comes in and escorts her to the head monk, where they discuss her allegiances. The monk tells her that there are actually three amulets and all three of them together would make the most powerful vampire. Once the monk realizes that Rain is the Dampier daughter of Kagan, the monastery is attacked by Domestir and his men. Rain joins in the fight for the monastery, and Vladimir and Sebastian show up as well. They literally watch Domestir ride toward the monastery. How are they behind him still? Katerine shows up as well and she helps Vladimir. Meanwhile, Rain gets knocked out by Domestir, and he carries her away from battle. 
Vladimir and Sebastian rush after him. Meanwhile, Kagan's men bring in a young wench that he uses to quench his thirst for blood. The next morning, Domestir rushes into a sanctuary with rain so that he can hide from the sun. The sanctuary is the home of Leonid, and he's not happy to see Domestir. When Leonid sees rain, he gets excited as he thinks that she's a gift for him. But Domestir tries to remind him that she's Kagan's. When Leonid sees Rain's eye, he immediately has Domestir removed, and he tells Rain to give him the eye. So what's Rain's response? She bites his ear off through his wig, of course. Isn't that what your first reaction would be? Also, it amazes me that they expect us to believe that the entire house full of vampires is no match for Vladimir and Sebastian. And one more weird point to make. If vampires are sensitive to sunlight, why do their layers have windows? Vladimir literally just killed Leonid by opening his windows. That's poor planning on Leonid's part. Vladimir and Sebastian take Rain away with them, and Domestir goes to Kagan to report that the Eye is now part of Kagan. That same night, Rain arrives at the Brimstone Society, and Kagan reveals that he's gained one of the talismans. Back at Brimstone, Rain tries to convince the others that she's no threat to them, and she explains how Kagan is her only enemy. She tells them about how Kagan forced himself onto her mother, and how he killed her after she refused to give Rain to him. After hearing this story, Vladimir lets Rain out. The next day, Katerine speaks with Vladimir about his newfound faith that he has in the Dampir, but he tries to tell her that he just doesn't have all of the answers. That evening, Rain starts training with the others, and Sebastian shows her that she really doesn't have any of her combat skills yet. One night, Sebastian goes to visit Rain with some new clothes, and she tells him about voices that she's hearing in her head. He admits that he has no idea about that, and he tries to offer her a place at the table. When she goes on another sob story, Sebastian decides that it's his turn to tell his sad backstory. His parents turned into vampires, and Vladimir actually killed them before they could get him. Later on, Rain comes out of her cell, and she manhandles Sebastian. Luckily, he's able to turn things around and seduce her instead. They do it right there in jail, and the relationship between the two of them is mended. Later, Vladimir and the others sit in the dining hall to eat, and Rain decides to join them. While Rain sits with the hunters, everyone seems to warm up to her, and this includes Katerine, who goes to her room to write to her father. Back at Kagan's castle, he gathers his thralls, and he commands them to take Brimstone Manor and retrieve Rain for him. Back at the manor, Rain trains with Sebastian until Katerine tells him to go see Vladimir. Now, Katerine decides to spar with Rain, but she isn't as friendly as Sebastian. She tells Rain about how her one true loyalty is her mission of destroying all vampires, and the sparring session gets really intense until Rain decides that she's had enough. Meanwhile, Domestir shows up at Elrich's manor, and he makes it clear that Kagan has little patience for his antics. Elrich hasn't seemed much like the paternal type throughout his small amount of screen time, but I'm very surprised to see how he's essentially standing up for Katerine here. Back at Brimstone, Katerine tries to convince Vladimir to take Sebastian with him on his run for supplies, and he eventually breaks down and agrees. Vladimir takes Rain and Sebastian into town, and they go to the butcher who helps supply them with provisions. Back at Brimstone, Katerine spies boat on the horizon, and she sees that it's actually Domestir. Back in town, Rain is gifted with a new set of blades. Near the water, a wounded man stumbles onto the shore, and Vladimir spots him on their way back to their boat. The man tells them that they were attacked by Domestir, and he tells them that there were no survivors. When he speaks with Rain alone, he tells her that Katerine is turned on Brimstone, and that she was actually the one that slaughtered some of their own people. Definitely saw that one coming from a mile away. I love Michelle Rodriguez. But she's got a natural look that makes her seem like she's always going to be on the bad side. When she turned in the Fast and Furious franchise, it just made so much sense. After the man dies, the group rests, but Rain soon gets up to leave. Sebastian tries to convince her to stay, but he eventually realizes that he can't stop her. The two of them part ways, and she takes the boat. When she gets inside, she sees that everyone's been slaughtered. But she finds that Domestir is still walking around and searching for her. Rain follows the voices in her head, and they just so happen to lead her to the third talisman. The bad news is that Katerine is already there searching with more of her men. She dives down into the cave water to search, and Rain decides to do the same from another opening. Rain quickly swims after Katerine, and she manages to drain her blood before snatching the heart talisman from her. Now that Rain has two of the talismans, she makes her way to Kagan's castle where Vladimir and Sebastian are already waiting for her. When Rain goes to the gate, she hands over the talisman to Domestir, and they take her to the castle jail. When Domestir brings the talisman to Kagan, they prepare for their ritual. Of course, Vladimir and Sebastian go in guns a-blazing. They literally approach the gate like they do in video games where they tell you that stealth is optional. They straight up gunpowder bombs at the gate and got themselves arrested. Great plan. 
Now that they're all in prison, Vladimir tells Rain about what'll happen to her when Kagan tries to take the eye out of her. And it turns out that it'll also remove her soul. That's fantastic. Eventually, Kagan's men show up to take Rain to the ceremony, and Kagan finally lays eyes on Rain for the first time. Kagan tells her that if she survives the ceremony, he'll let her stay there with him in the castle. Meanwhile, Vladimir and Sebastian stage a jailbreak, and they just crash Kagan's party upstairs. Again, how is it that we're supposed to believe that Sebastian and Vladimir are able to take on a castle's worth of vampires here? Not just any vampires either. Domestir and Kagan are in this room, and they still decided that it was a good idea to leap off the balcony. Kagan opens up the talisman box to find that the heart isn't in it anymore, and he gets ready to fight the others. As Kagan's men hold Vladimir down, Kagan runs him through with his sword, and Domestir manages to run Sebastian through with his sword. In a last act of honor, Sebastian is able to bring Domestir down as well. Now it's just Rain versus Kagan. Kagan continuously tries to convince Rain to give him the talismans, but she holds true to her vengeance. Kagan seems to get the upper hand when he stabs her twice, but Sebastian manages to hurt him with holy water for a moment. Now Rain is able to take the crossbow bolt that Kagan is holding, and she shoves it right into Kagan's heart. The pacing of this movie is crazy. Just when you think things are getting good, it just cuts things short. Just let me enjoy the movie for a minute. Rain goes to Sebastian to turn him into a vampire so he can live, but Sebastian won't allow it. This farewell is so cringy, it looks like Sebastian's just putting himself to sleep. Now that everyone's dead, Rain goes to Kagan's throne, and she sits where he once sat. Then we get a glimpse of Rain's journey to where she is from her days in the carnival, and the credits roll. I can't sit here and tell you that this movie's great, and I'm actually going to tell you that this movie is sometimes a little hard to watch. Yet I can't help but feel a soft spot for it as a video game movie. I love it. Cringy acting and all. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next and I'll see you in the next video.